Amen. 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 To come out to the house of God. Amen. Through the rain, through the storm. Amen. To know that God is the faithful God. That he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will be, he will be with us until the end of the age. We can trust in the Lord. We can depend upon God. He will never fail us. In blessing, he's promised to bless us. In multiplying, he's promised to multiply us. And there is absolutely nothing that is too hard for the Lord to do. So cast all your cares upon him. <laughs> because the Lord cares for you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that we keep hope alive. Thank you for faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is your love, Lord. That is shed abroad in our hearts even by the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you join me, amen, in welcoming, amen, our Facebook Live, amen, audience, those that are viewing live, uh, those, amen, that would view, amen, on a later date, amen. We thank God for you. We praise God for you, amen. As far as our voice, amen, can be heard and the lives that we can reach and touch, amen, we thank God, amen, for you, amen. And we honor in the presence of God, amen, in our lives. Amen. To God be all of the glory for the things that he, God, has done, that he is doing, and that he has promised to do in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank God for expectancy. The best is truly, amen, yet to come. <laughs> it's truly, amen, yet to come. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue to share with you, amen, from our series, 30 Days of Taming Your Tongue. And today's message is beware of liars and deceivers. Beware of liars and deceivers. From our series in the book, 30 Days of Taming Your Tongue by Deborah Bacchus. Beware of liars and deceivers. Now you know it is very important if Jesus talked about this subject and this topic matter. And he talked about many things, but this is one that uh, he talked about is something that I believe uh, that we must give attention to, uh, that we must have an understanding of, and uh, that we should not have or can, you know, continue to have our heads stuck in the sand concerning it. There's so much that's going on, amen, in our world, in our communities, our neighborhoods, Amen. In our homes and businesses and places that we work. And uh, we must understand that the Lord desires for us to know him intimately. That we would have a personal relationship with God. That, listen, we would have a salvific born again experience. And so he says to Nicodemus, marvel not. That you must be born again. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. And so in these last days that we can avoid being deceived. That we can avoid being duped or hoodwinked or bamboozled by lies. We must have a strong walk and intimate relationship with God. Now I will tell you also that some things are just common sense. You don't got to be deep. You don't got to be spiritual. You just need to, listen, open your eyes and open your ears and hear what you hear and see what you see. Come on here, somebody. But thank God because we are saying we are born again and we understand that the devil, Satan, is the prince of the power of the air. And there's a more powerful influence that's working in the earth realm, amen, than just natural, amen, human elements of flesh and blood. God help me here today. And so uh, Paul says in Ephesians 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the powers of darkness, the rules of uh, darkness of this age, spiritual wickedness and forces in high places are uh, beings without bodies that's looking for somebody to live in or somebody to possess, to invade and to take over their lives. And so liars are dece and deceivers are influenced by demon power. Those that are unregenerated are those that are not walking in the spirit, but are fulfilling the lust, the craves, the desires, and the dictates of the flesh or the Adamic nature, that sin nature that's on the inside of them. 
And so when we begin to understand that the Lord has invested so much and he has done everything for us, we must maintain a God-connectedness. A real walk in a relationship, amen, with the Lord. Because if you turn on your local news, amen, every way you look around you, we can see the evidence of liars and deceivers. Where lives are messed up, amen, lives are destroyed, amen, and we begin to reap the benefits, amen, of what we have sown, of what we have allowed to enter into our lives. So we must guard our heart for out of it flows the issues and the wellspring of life. So you must be on guard. You must be alert. You must engage yourself in spiritual warfare and understand that it is real. Tell somebody it is real. Spiritual warfare is real. And so we must understand that we got to guard our heart. We must have a walk in a relationship with God. We must pray without ceasing. We must renew our minds with the word of God. God help me here. That is the only thing ultimately that's going to combat against, amen, lies and deception. The forces of darkness that come up against us. And so if we have a strong walk in relationship with God, we are renewing our minds with the word of the Lord. We are praying without ceasing. We have a God connectedness. Come on here, somebody. We have been baptized with the Holy Spirit of God. Then we begin to understand that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. So I wanted, I wanted you to also connect a few of the 30 days of the chapters from the book to this message today. Beware of liars and deceivers. So you got to be on your guard. You got to be on your guard. You want to believe the best in and about everybody. Come on here, somebody. But understand also that people are people. And everybody don't know Christ. Everybody not really living and walking, amen, with God. And there's some people that just flat out don't care about you. All they're concerned about is what they can get from you and get out of you. They do not have your interest at heart. It's all about them. So from our book, 30 Days of Taming Your Tongue, I just coupled 70, seven of these together. One is a lion tongue. Two, a flattering tongue. Three, a manipulating tongue. Four, a divisive tongue. Five, an intimidating tongue. I added as the number six, not in order of sequence of the 30 days, but for my notes and reference, a cynical tongue. And number seven, a self-absorbed tongue. So you can take your book. There's times, you know, when I, you know, I jump back and forth from chapter to chapter. Or we got 30 days in this book, you know, from one day to the next day. You know, for me, it's whatever works for me or whatever the Spirit of the Lord is dealing with me about. So don't make it legalistic. Amen, somebody. So a lying tongue, a flattering tongue, a manipulating tongue, a divisive tongue, an intimidating tongue, a cynical tongue, and then a self absorb tongue so you can take note to those and understand that when you're dealing with lies and deception a lot of times you're dealing with an intimidation factor you're dealing with some forms of manipulation and or that somebody can gain control of you or your mind and also where they will want to dominate your life to dominate your life. And I put you in a prison, you know, and you become like putty in their hands where you really believe in and everything that they say. You're willing to do any and everything that they ask you to do. Amen, somebody. Sometimes under the pretense of religion, sometimes under the pretense of submission, sometimes under the, the, the pre pretense that we are obeying the Lord. But how many know that you, are, you better obey God more than man? That you will not be deceived and you will not be lied to. And no good leader, amen, man or woman of God, amen, or somebody that said they love you or care about you is, is going to ask you to do anything that's contrary, amen, to the word of God. That's contrary, amen, to your belief system and your core value and your ethics. That's godly. That's honorable. That's filled with integrity. But somebody that would try to gain advantage over you 
they got to do that by way, amen, of distracting you. They got to do that by way of, amen, lying and deceiving you to get you to think something, amen, that is wrong is right. Or they got to twist the truth where they hoodwink and bamboozle you. And it happens all the time. Where it's almost now where people will believe a lie before they believe the truth because they fix it up so good. Play role acting, man. You know, and people, you know, oh, God, help me here. I'm going to use this as an example. You know, and, and, well, you know people are, uh, for example, they're, they're cross-dressed. And you can almost tell sometime, man, are you really a man or a woman? It's deception. And people are trying to be something that they're really not. Politicians lie all the time. Deceive all the time. You know, and now it's all, you know, it's creeping in the church house, the school house, the court. It's like all around us everywhere. And if you have a real walking relationship with God, I promise you, you got trouble coming. And a whole lot of people got a whole lot of hell to catch in their lives because they believe the lie before they believe the truth. Listen, I don't care what your name is, how popular they are. Come on, syndicated television, you know. I mean, you on TV, I don't care who you are. If you are a worker of the devil, you got to understand that people can and will lie for money. Come on here. For sex and power, you know. And they get at a certain place, they'll do anything for it. They'll say anything to obtain it. They don't care who they hurt over it. They don't care who they destroy over it as long as they get what they want. Liars and deceivers. Let's look a little bit at this word deception. The act of deceiving someone. Obtaining something by way of falsehood. That you know that you're not being honest but you're being dishonest. Even if you are telling part truth, you're still lying somewhere. You're not disclosing and you're not divulging full information. You got trickery, you got cutting, you got craftiness. That's on your mind. You got an ulterior motive that's on your mind. You're going to be smiling, giggling, laughing. You could be crying crocodile tears with sympathy. People use all kind of forms of deception and lies to gain advantage. In other words, listen, listen here. They got to work on your emotions. They got to work on your senses in some kind of way. They're trying to exploit your vulnerabilities. That's what they're after. It's like where they want to weaken you know, your defenses. That's the only way they can really get in to deceive you. They got to start breaking you down. They got to build some kind of trust level with you that you can trust what they say. Or you believe what they say. <laughs> it's like their word is golden. They, they can never do wrong. They can never say wrong. Hmm? They got to get you to buy in to something. They real good salespeople. They'll sell you false wolf tickets and wood nickels all day long as long as you're willing to buy them and accept them. They'll hand them out all day. <laughs> Here you go. You need some, you want some. How many? It's like a circus. You always got something crazy that's going on, something, you know, that kind of mesmerizes you. <laughs> huh? It's got to be some kind of attraction. A lot of times it's fatal attraction. Could be their charisma. They got to gain advantage over you to get what they are after. <laughs> and so we got to stay woke. We got to keep our eyes open. And we got to maintain our walk and our relationship with God. So the act or the actions of deceiving someone, deceitfulness. Are you hearing the term where they got duped? They got duped. Dealing with fraud, dealing with cheating, dealing with trickery. <laughs> Almost like a magician. <laughs> You'd be like, how did he do that? 
In other words, they got some stuff under their belt to use. Think that what that really is is the reality in in essence. It's a lie. That's why a lot of times you and people, man, they'll take scripture out of context and make it a pretext to say what they wanted to say to gain advantage over people. They want to manipulate their minds. That's why you have to know the truth for yourself. And the Lord says, you shall, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And so lies and deception is designed to put you in a prison and a bondage. Could be to something or to somebody. But you got to believe it first. They sly. They lie. It's pretense. It's treachery. It's deviousness. <laughs> they got a whole lot of monkey business going on. <laughs> they just crooked. It's crookedness and it's treachery. And somebody begins to buy into their scheme. You know, you ever heard of the pyramid schemes? Well, all they really ask is your money, and they, they know that you're not going to make no money because they're making all the money. But they'll suck you right in, tell you how wonderful it is, and it could be a good product, but you ain't going to make no money with it. Instead of them telling you, hey, man, we're too far in, we got too many people, you know, the pyramid is too high, and you way down here on the totem pole. Wait till something new come around and so you can get up at the top. Because the people down in the bottom don't make a whole lot of money. They're just making money off the people at the bottom, the people at the top. It's a trick. It's a scam and a sham. You know, it, it, so the deceitfulness, it's a hoax. You know, you ever heard of fake news? It's all around us, lies and deception. It's like you don't know who to believe or what, what to believe. It ought to be a crime. This is what I say. It ought to be criminal. It ought to be a felony if you get false news and false information, especially around voting time. I mean, from the politicians to the news media, you know, and anybody that want to try to sway somebody's mind, it ought to be criminal, at least a misdemeanor. Well, you got to think about, listen, don't be trying to lie and to deceive people. And sway them to your particular party. It's fake. It's a hoax. It's fraud. It's a scheme. In other words, when people want to cheat and swindle you out of something. It could be your gift that God's given you. When they want to just prostitute the gift of God that he has given you. And so there is an ulterior motive for it. And so in reality, listen, you got to begin to sift through, decipher through. Use common sense. Hear the voice of the Spirit of God. Hear somebody that loves you and say, that joker ain't no good for you. You better get out of there and run for your life. They messed up hit her life. He messed up her life. Messed up her life. Messed up her life. And you're going to have baby mama drama if you ain't careful. So the light begins to expose the darkness of lies and deception. Somebody got to turn the light on. And the Lord wants to use us in his kingdom and his service to be a blessing in somebody's life. Beware of lies and deception. They will doom and they will damn your soul. Evil communication will always corrupt good manners. Corrupt good manners. And so a lion and a deceiving tongue, all the way back in the book of Genesis, all the way back in the book of beginnings, we see lies and deceptions galore. <laughs> and there's always a price to pay for that because the eyes of the Lord, the ears of the Lord in every place. God knows who did what, when they did it. No matter how we try to what, we try to cover up. You know, you know you did what you did. Now you want to try to cover up. And God said, oh no. Oh no. I see everything. And you may get by you with a jury and a judge, but God is the super judge. 
<laughs> God is the super judge. And so the lies of deception, all the way back in the book of Genesis, with Satan kicked out of heaven, prideful, hearty, lifted up, as though he really thought he could take over the throne of God. You see how strong lies and deception are? I don't know where that boy got it from. Some people conjure up stuff in their own mind. Yes, you know, for some people, power, you know, and authority, even if it's delegated, can ruin their crazy self. Yes. You be wondering, man, what is, what is you really thinking? Or you wasn't thinking at all, I see. The thing by way, you know, the lies and deception could be even in your own mind because there is a certain thing as self-deception. The way you can convince yourself that something is right or somebody is right and it's good for you. Or this is what I should be doing. That's why we have to acknowledge the Lord not in just one or two, but in all of our ways. Because he's going to bring to light even the, the dishonest things of darkness. The thing that you don't see, the thing that you have not considered, you know, the thing that you have not heard. That's why when I'm talking to people sometimes, I'll be like, can you repeat that again? Because I might have heard something, you know, that, uh, uh, did I hear that? Did I really hear what I thought I heard? Let me verify. <laughs> Let me validate, is this what I really heard? Because you got some fast talkers, lies and deceivers. Some smooth talkers, lies and deceivers. They charismatic too, man. They, boy, they make it look so pretty. They look good. They smell good. They talk good. And you got some. They could be homeless. But they still lies and deceivers. And they want to play on your sympathy. And we know everybody got a story, but is this an honest story? Do you really need help? Do you really need support? Do you really need some food? Are you really hungry? Why do you want my money and my funds? Is your family really homeless? Is your child really sick? Do they really have cancer or some kind of incurable disease? Are they in intensive care for real? Let's go see it. Let's go see them. I want to go pray for them. And so we understand where the spirit originates. It does not originate in the Lord. It originates through Satan, a fallen angel, created being. That he brings lies and deception into the earth realm and introduces it to God's creation. And the woman entertains it first. When God has strictly said, she was strictly informed, I believe, by amen, her husband, Adam, that God has said we are not to bother or entertain or touch or handle any of that. And goes beyond the boundaries. Of what God's spoken word had commanded for her. And then she introduced it to him. And he and her ate. And as soon as Adam ate, they died. So lies and deception will doom and damn your soul. It will bring a form of death to you. Even if it's just emotional, even if it's just psychological, you will go through hell and high water. When you believe falsehood, when somebody is saying or doing or acting like somebody that they're not, they're saying one thing out of their mouth, but their lifestyle is saying something different. Their actions and their ways are saying something different. Because true, a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. And so the word the Lord has to say, uh, has a whole lot to say about deception, about deceit. Let's go over here to James. Let me give you a foundation. We'll rehearse this again just for your listening ears. Because, you know, it's, a, it's essential, especially understanding that we're living in perilous times. We're living in the last days. 
And if the Lord talked about this, well, we got to understand that it, it must be important to us. We like the president line, preacher's line, the pope line. People just lying all around everywhere. You know, I'm going to incriminate you. No, I'm going to just tell the truth. Every single time. In the book of James, let's look at chapter 3, James chapter 3. And we're going to go down to verse number uh, 3 just for the sake of time for today. James chapter 3 and verse 3 says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that, we may, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds. It says, They are turned by very small rudder or helm, wherever the pilot, the governor, or the captain desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles or starts? The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it, it is set on fire what? By hell. It's burst out of something. It's burst out of somewhere. That we have to understand that it's not normal, it's not natural, it's not God for a person just to live a lifestyle of habitual lying and deception. Well, you don't know when to believe them. You don't know they tell them, man, are you being honest with me? Are you joking? You're kidding? What's going on with you? Because see, like every time they open their mouth, they got falsehood coming out of it. Yeah. Or they covered up another lie that they told. Yeah. And it's just a continual, ongoing, progressive way of how they live their life. So out of the abundance of the heart, Scripture does say that the mouth does speak. But then James says, how can sweet and bitter water come out of the same fountain of the same sister? You're going to be a truth teller or you're going to be a falsehood bearer. Well, people are going to know you by something. They're going to know you by what you, by what you say and or by what you do. So they're listening and they're watching and they're paying attention. No matter where you are, they are listening, they are watching, and they are paying attention because somebody know you. Somebody know you. And so the word of God has a lot to say about deception, about lies. Let's go to Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24. Because there's a lot of people have been deceived, and this is church, you know, uh, uh, where, you know, we're in the house of God, and, and uh, over time and, and history, you know, we can see it, we can understand it, that there have been leaders and preachers and evangelists and pastors and prophets, they have lied and deceived people. And so it's a lot of, don't do as I do, do as I say do. And they may never say that, but their, their actions are, are really saying that. And then you got people that's going to believe that fool and feel like that's the way I'm supposed to live. That's the way I'm supposed to act. That's the way I'm supposed to conduct myself. Especially if little Johnny and little Jill are watching you. They don't know a whole lot better because you need to be training them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. But you're training them to be deceptive and to be liars and manipulators. And by any means possible, baby, you can get what you want if you say the right thing. In Matthew chapter number 24, Jesus predicts the destruction of the temple. He talks about the great tribulation. He also talks about the coming of the Son of Man. He talks about the fig tree. And we're going to look in Matthew chapter number 24 and verse 3. He says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the, uh, the sign of your coming and the end of the age? 
And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that what no one or no man what deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and what and will deceive what many. Now I know it's historic. Yeah, everybody should by now somewhere along the lines of history, you know, heard about you know the tragedy of Jonestown and Jim Jones. How he lied and deceived the people, lied and deceived the news media, and all of a sudden, accountability showed up on his doorstep. And instead of him being open, honest, transparent, repentant, pleading guilty, you know what? He influenced all those people with lies and deception to take their lives, to drink poison. To drink poison and to kill, to commit suicide. That's how strong, that's how powerful, influenced by demon power, it can be so destructive in a person's life. In a person's home, with a person man, where it separates, it divides even among the chief among friends and relatives and loved ones and co-workers. You'd be like, why would you do that? They're influenced by demon power. That is not normal behavior or activity for people to engage themselves in. It is not normal. And somebody has to stand up for the truth. And say, I will expose you. And I say, oh, cover them, cover them, cover them. Everybody want to cover everything now. I told you the Lord called me the sanitation cleanup department man. So you know, you know, people look down on them. You know, act like they're not important. Right? Act like they're insignificant until you go in a bathroom stall and it's tore up from the floor. Up. And you wonder, who's going to clean all this up? Oh, it's a messy job. Oh, it's a dirty job. Oh, it's a nasty, it's a filthy job. And you can contract some kind of disease by doing the job, something that can hurt you or, or be harmful to you, but it's still your responsibility to do your job. Protect yourself as much as you can, but you are still putting yourself in harm's way to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. What? So help you God. We're going to make sure this is able to be enjoyable by everybody. So we're going to go in here. We're going to do what we got to do. We're going to clean it. We're going to sanitize it. We're going to wipe it down. But we're going to trust in the protection of the Holy Spirit over our lives. In the process thereof. So it's not always the easiest thing. But if, the, if it's the assignment of God, you got to stand firm. You got to stand bold. Even as Jesus confirmed the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. He said, you are your father root, the devil, in John chapter 8. And the deeds of your daddy, he says, that's what you're going to do. He was a liar what from the beginning. Amen. And he has not changed his behavior. That's how we know him. <laughs> that's how we know those that are connected to him. That's how we know those that are his children. Because everybody said, I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know the Lord. You hear all the witness of people now with evangelism because everybody know the Lord. Everybody going to heaven. Everybody don't know the Lord and everybody ain't going to heaven. So he says in verse 5 again, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of war, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, in divers places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. And so they're going to deliver you up, to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated what? By all nations for my name's sake. So in essence here is talking about the deception of the last days. Well people, if they're not careful they'll, they'll find themselves pulled in and sucked in. Into the lies and the deception of the world. And the world system that's influenced by Satan and demon power. 
You know why? Because people don't believe that demon power even exists now. They don't believe that it's, it's even real now. Everything is attributed to something psychiatric. Yeah, it is something wrong with their mind, but it's influenced or possessed by somebody. Because certain things are not natural. <laughs> you remember I told you I grew up in the house with a man who just habitually lied. He just lied. He lied. He lied. And he lied some more. Like everything that he said out of his mouth was a lie. So it's like, how can you trust that joker? <laughs> yeah, man, I can't trust you, man. I can't trust you with my life or my wife. <laughs> hmm? Can't trust you with my money or my car. Some people you just can't trust. I don't care if they're family members. You know, if some people can't, you know, can't, can't trust their wife or their husband. You might have could have at one time, but now you're like, I don't know. That's why you got crazy stuff on folks' job. People lying and deceiving. Jockeying for a position. Just lying on people. Being deceiver, being manipulative. And don't understand that, hey, you're going to reap what you sow. Sooner than you know, and more than you know, because it's all coming back again. Somebody said, karma. I used to hate that word. I understand it's just like reaping what you sow. That's what it is. And it's in the Bible. That you will reap what you sow. Sooner than you know, more than you know. And so you can't be upset with nobody. You just got to take a good hard look at yourself and say, oh, Lord, I have just messed up some stuff. In Proverbs chapter number 26, I'm going to take you to a few of these scriptures. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 26. Because for a lot of people, they have no truth in their arsenal. And David says, with or with all, said a young man clears his way. He says, by taking heed that to according to your word. He said, with my whole heart have I sought you. He said, Lord, don't let me wander from your commandments. And look at the nature of some of these uh, liars and deceivers. In Proverbs chapter 26, and we're going to look right here at verse number 25. And number 26, verse 25 and 26. Proverbs 26, 25 says, When he speaks kindly, do not believe him. For there are seven abominations in his heart. How many know on the Lord know the thought and the intents of the heart? You know, there are seven abominations in his or her heart. Though his hatred is covered, what? By deceit. In other words, they're not being open, they're not being honest, and they show enough not being transparent with you. I hope somebody listened to me today, Lord. It's going to save you from a whole lot of heartache and a whole lot of pain. Verse 26 again says, Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before what? The assembly. You see why people are exposed? Because what's in you coming out of you? And the devil don't love you. He may give you this, you may have this, you may get that, you may have this open to you. But ultimately, Lord, he can doom and damn your soul. Because you can't take nothing with you. You brought nothing in the world, it's certain that you're going to take nothing out. And, you know, and so you got people that are just double-faced, liars and deceivers. They will smile in your face and stab you in your back. Liars and deceivers. They will be with you today. They're with you today, and tomorrow they'll leave you. They could be in your corner today. You're going to be the best thing since sliced bread. Tomorrow you stale bread with mold on it. <laughs> you know, you like real cheese, you know, and then turn moldy. You say, well, we eat that cheese, that's penicillin. You can eat it if you want to. You, you could be eating damnation to your soul. You could be eating damnation and they'd be putting you six feet under next week. That's what lies and deception to do. It'll kill you from the inside out. It'll ruin you. And have you stressed out? Have you all disembobulated? You can't even function right? Especially when you have a real heart of love and compassion for people. 
You'd be like, how, how could they do that? It would be like, why did they do that? Or how could they do it for so long? And, and, and why did they hurt so many people? Why did they just come clean and repent? And confess that it's me that I messed up lives all over everywhere. And let people begin the healing process. You know, instead of you being called in on the red carpet and you sitting there and you know you're getting ready to lie again. So seven abominations. So anytime and every time you open up your mouth, it's lies and deception. Let's go over here to 2 Peter chapter 2. And you need to believe in your man and woman of God, but you don't need to be ignorant. Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant. Because this is something some people are doing behind closed doors and behind the scenes. Trying to separate their public life from their private life. No, it's just life. <laughs> and you need to get a real one. And be who you are no matter where you are. <laughs> you got people coming thinking, hey, oh, you the, you, oh, yeah, that's your gift working. But on the inside of you is lies and deception. You are living a life of hypocrisy. Is what it is. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, let's look at verse number 1. He says, but there were also false prophets among the people. Even as there will be what? False teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. Even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their what? Destructive or pernicious ways because of whom the way of truth will be what? Blaspheme. In other words, they don't want to embrace truth. They knock down truth. It's all God to mean like, like that. God mean just what he says like he said. So not only are they affected or infected, they also infect other people. Lies and deception, the people who live within that spirit, it's very infectious because evil communication corrupts good manners. It's all right, not me. Well, hang around a liar long enough. Hang around a cheater, hang around a bike biter, hang around a negative person, come on, a condescending person, you know, and all of a sudden you start picking up their ways. It's so subtle. I see people get into relationships, good people, wonderful people, great people, and they start getting influenced by that other person, male or female, acting just like them. Yeah. Talking and living their life just like them. Look, you wasn't raised like that, little girl. <laughs> little boy, you know you wasn't raised like that. Somewhere along the line, they have convinced him or her that that's okay and that's right and ain't nothing wrong with it. And you're going to be okay. Everybody do. Yeah, you know, all that God stuff. They got to say or do something to make you feel like that thing is okay and it's acceptable. And it's not. You got a baby over here and a baby over here. Just because they did it don't mean it's right to do. Even just because they got away with it don't mean it's the right of what you should be doing. I don't care, listen, if you're the only one that ain't doing it, hey, it'll be all right. I don't care if 10,000 other preachers over here doing stupid, I will be all over here by myself saying, Lord, keep my mind in perfect peace. Destructive doctrines, liars and deceivers, falsehood. And verse 2 again says, The many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed or evil spoken against. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. 
For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes and condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and deliver righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver what the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority, they are presumptuous, self-will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities or dignitaries. Lord, help me here. Whereas angels who are great in power and might do not bring a reveling accusation against them before the Lord. But these, like natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of the things they do not understand, and will utterly perish in their what? In their own corruption, and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who can count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. There are spots and blemishes carousing in their own what? Deception while they what? While they feast with you. You better watch who in your circle. You better be careful who in your bubble. You better watch who's influencing you, who's speaking uh, in your ear, even if they calling them sweet nothing. Sweet nothing is something. And you start believing all that stuff. You think they really care about you. Oh, no. Oh, God. Help us, Lord. All they are after is what they can get out of you. Power, money, you know, sex, some kind of advantage. If people drain people, bank accounts dry. Huh? Come in stealthily. Come in under the radar, like incognito mode. <laughs> and by the time they finish, you wonder what happened. You wonder how could it have happened to me? All the signs was all around, all the evidence was there, but you wouldn't hear the voice of reason, even by people that loved you, trying to tell you the truth. Saw some stuff. <laughs> Even though they say, hey, that was reported to me, it might be worth your investigation Amen. to at least qualify and say, is this true? <laughs> is this right? Is this accurate about you of the stuff that I'm hearing? Let me give you this scripture. This is James 1.26. Those who consider themselves to be religious and do not keep a tight rein on their tongues. And James says, you're only deceiving yourself. I'd be weird people that just got diarrhea of the mouth. You know, the Lord ain't talking to you that much, man. Prophet, prophet is God ain't talking to you that much. He didn't talk to the Old Testament prophets or seals that much. He didn't even talk to the ones in the New Testament that much. But he does speak now. But more power he has spoken and he is still speaking to all of us through his word. Through his word. That's how you avoid a whole lot of deception. People will tell you that they get you all happy, all excited. Ah! And you be pulled out your light bill money, your rent money, and now you're in a bind for the rest of the month and two or three months down the road. Because God didn't tell you to do that. A charlatan did. Somebody say, oh, now he going to, listen, if that vision of God, you don't got to manipulate people. You don't got to lie and deceive people. Amen. Just be honest. Listen, if you need some money for a particular call or you done messed over some money, just tell the truth about it and be done. They're going to give or they're not going to give. 
Or they might ask you, well, um, uh, why you do that? That's called accountability. And people that live in lies and deception, they want to be as far away from accountability as they possibly can. They don't want nobody to question them, to ask them no questions. Huh? You, hey, I ain't got nothing to hide. Somebody asked me that day, I said, no, I sure don't. They said, you ain't got nothing. I said, I sure don't, buddy. It had something to do with my cell phone. I said, I ain't got nothing here to hide. I said, there's quite a few people that's close to me got access to the, the, what my uh, uh, cell phone password is. I ain't got nothing to hide. And they asked me a question, but I said, well, yeah, this, that, and other. How many know, you know, stuff pop up on your phone? Uh, I know they might get upset with me about telling little stories about them, but when my kids was very young and in school, somebody sent them a link to a porn site. Infected our desktop computer. I turned the computer on, and I'm, woo, Jesus. It wasn't them. It was a liar and a deceiver. Somebody planted something. That they wasn't privy about, and they open it up, and here it is. It exposed them to some foolishness. And then the guys, you my friend, you looking out for me? Everybody that say they're your friend, they ain't your friend. Everybody say they're in your corner, and in your corner. I don't care how much the, look, I know people are upset. I don't care how much the path of rap is all, that, that rap, the arm around that hole might not be a godly one. People right here getting to see, thinking the pastor, you don't care. No, you, whoa. Oh. Woo. Woo, Jesus. I know people on Facebook like, well, oh, man, look at him. You know? You know they after something. That's all I'm going to say. They after something. It ain't just that you're old, you know, you're the good sister. You know. They try to get something out of you. They got to feel you out. You got to see how far they can go with you. Lies and deception. Huh? We need a counseling session. Behind closed doors, ain't nobody. No, we don't need no counseling session. The Lord showed me something. We need to talk about make it important, make it valuable, make it like it's unavoidable. We need to deal with this. We need to handle this. Let me pray about that first. I hear God too. Lies and deception. Yeah, but your religion is vain. You're out of bottle of your tongue. Keep your mouth closed. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll resume this Wednesday and need be Sunday. Because there's a lot I still want to cover in this. And I'm going to take my time with it. Because there's enough trick for running around screaming and hollering and yelling. All emotional. And they ain't hearing the word of God. Somebody else even got so excited over prophets. They ain't heard nothing the prophet said. You better stand there and listen. And hear and I hope you got a good friend that's beside you that's documenting everything before you get to running after a lie. God's he going to give you a, a two-story house and a Mercedes Benz. You ain't making but $9 an hour. <laughs> How are you going to pay for all of that? Maybe they add, oh, you finna get an increase. You finna get a promotion. You finna do this, da, da, whatever. Some stuff just common sense. You're like, really? Come on. Deception and lies. Just for gain or advantage. False teachers, false prophets, the last days. It's all around us. The spirit of Antichrist is already in the land. And working in somebody, through somebody. Somebody, listen, it's going to be the son of perdition. You know, somebody the devil is going to use in this world, in this lifetime, whether we hear or go, to bring in the second coming of Christ and the, and the, and the catching away of the church of God. Y'all better look at the handwriting on the wall. They just had a 7.0. 
catastrophic 400 mile radius earthquake in Alaska. And look at all the other stuff that we're dealing with. The probes of lying in the highest office in the land, if you believe that. <laughs> but it happened in the churches, among leaders, among preachers, profound. Now we trust them. Spiritual wickedness in high places. And why do we just think about that as being the world system? Not church. There's a whole lot of that in the church world. There's a whole lot of that stuff that the cover's coming off. My dad, my granddad used to say, a wolf can't hide. His head gonna stick out, his ears gonna stick out, his tail gonna stick out, his feet gonna stick out. Something gonna reveal and manifest itself sooner or later. When I say Second Thessalonians. We're going to look at 2 Thessalonians 2, the great apostasy, false prophets, false teachers, lies, and deceivers. See, this is the kind of church where, you know, stuff where the church don't want to hear or don't want to have to deal with. And there's a lot of leaders that don't want to hear, don't want to have to deal with it because it might be your buddy or your pal or your friend that's a liar and a deceiver. Now what you going to do? It could be, listen, it could be your blood relative. It could be your twin brother or sister. It could be your mom or your daddy. Now what you going to do? And you know they've been lying and deceiving and scheming for a long time. But if you've been getting, you know, kickbacks from it, you know, they've been padding you and taking care of you, huh? you're going to be less apt to say something. Because the love of money is the root of what? All kinds of evil. Mm -mm. We've seen it. We've seen it, man. I don't care how saved the person appears to be, how holy it seems to be, whatever calling, the gift, and the office, the title you give yourself. Seen them preach and pray and prophesy and speak in tongues and lay hands on people and full of lies and deception. They messed up homes, tore up homes, tore up marriages, tore up families. And you know they life tore up. They ain't really got no life. That's why they messed up everybody else's life. Getting folk pregnant. People having abortions. The great apostasy is upon us like never before. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9. Let's look at verse 1. Now, brother, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away come first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, primarily this is the spirit, but it's going to possess somebody as though they untouchable. As though they don't have no accountability. As though God is not God. Verse 5 says, Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may reveal in his own time. For well, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
So Satan always wanted to be God. It was revolt and re revolution in heaven and the third of the angels that fell with him. And thank God for the Holy Spirit that's in us that's keeping us from being really deceived and who we can bamboozle by the unfruitful works of darkness. So it's the restraining force the Holy Spirit is in our lives as well as in the earth realm that keeps Satan from really reaping havoc. We say, oh man, it's bad. Oh man, it's awful out there. Oh man, it's a wild, wild west. You wait till the church and the real saints of God get out of here. And all of a sudden, the floodgates of hell and destruction, I mean, they're going to be flung wide open. Because there's no restraining force. There will be no governor there anymore. People's lives still can be changed, but it's going to be a hard way to go. So lawlessness is already revealed. And the Lord's going to consume in his coming, in his presence. Look at verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. With all power. Look at this. This is deception and lies. With all power, has the ability to do certain things, to make certain things happen, supernatural stuff. That's how the people, people get so deceived. <laughs> he says, signs. And look at this. And then he says, what? And lying wonders. I'm going to take you to Jude in a minute. It says that with all unrighteousness, deception among those who what? Who perish. Because they do not what? Receive what? The love of the truth that they might be saved. Verse 11, for this reason God will send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie. That they all might be condemned who did not what? Believe the truth. Believe the truth. But had pleasure in un what? Unrighteousness. Satan's signs, lying wonders and miracles. Let me read this little footnote for you. Satan has the power to work signs and lying wonders in order to deceive people. The supernatural forces behind the occult and all these Eastern religions, cults, Satanism, witchcraft, sorcery are real. Just because someone works a supernatural side or a woman does not mean that he or she is from God. Satan can cause his people to perform wonders and signs for the sake of spiritual deception. And I submit to you today, as God's sanitary cleanup man, there's a whole lot of people out there, right, that are workers of the devil and not of God. And people are being deceived because of seemingly a gift. The gift and the calling of God are even without, without repentance. That gift of work when that life is just messed up. Unrepentant, off in this, off in that. Sitting in this, you know, and, and iniquity over here. Uh, and you and you think, hey, you call the Jesus. Not everyone that call him Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth what? The will of the Father who is in heaven. All right, listen. I hope people are able to endure sound doctrine. You know, that's part of the end times deception that they will not endure what? Sound doctrine, sound, healthy, whole teaching. They get running after teachers and you got itching ears. Let me tell you this little testimony. I was at work the other day and there was this guy, he was in there teaching and talking. I think he was training or doing something. And, uh, you know, we just kind of stand around as a little group and a little team, and as he's talking, and all of a sudden, my right ear just start itching. You know, I mean, it was like uncontrollable. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what in the world? They looking at me, I'm like, why am I itching like this here? You know what it was? Joke would just lying, deceiving to gain advantage. You know, people do that with jokes. You just go overboard with stuff. And you're not really being honest. 
In other words, you exaggerating something. And all I'm saying to you with that is, listen, God will let you know if something ain't right. Your Holy Ghost alert alarm system will go off and let you know, give you some indicators that somebody's trying to gain an advantage over you or somebody else or, or to try to appear to be something or somebody that they're really not. I'm teaching better than somebody saying amen. So he says, Satan can cause his people to perform wonders and signs for the sake of spiritual deception. Whenever people deliberately reject the truth of the Bible, they set themselves up to be deluded and deceived. The Antichrist will come upon the scene and deceive millions of people. Because these people reject the truth, what, in Jesus Christ. Now let's go over to Galatians chapter 6. Let me show you this. <laughs> Galatians 6, and we're going to look at verse number 6. The scriptures attributed a lot to giving or, or law of reciprocity or reaping and sowing. But this is in so many areas of our lives. And it says, let him who is taught in the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that shall he also what? Reap. For he who sows through his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows of the Spirit, capital S, will of the Spirit, what? Reap everlasting life. So you can't just run around being a carnal Christian. You can't just run around walking and fulfilling the lusts and the dictates of your flesh, your lower nature. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The title of this message is Beware of Liars and Deceivers. No matter what the color of their skin is, no matter what the power they possess, the influence that they have, the office that they hold, the title that they have, Beware of Liars and Deceivers. Because if you lie, you'll steal, you'll cheat, you'll do a whole lot of stuff that's contrary to sound doctrine. All right, are you in 1 Corinthians chapter 6? Let's look right here at verse number 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not what? Inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. There it is again. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will what? Inherit the kingdom of God. And he says, such were some of you, <laughs> but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. That's called salvation and deliverance. That's called if any man be in Christ, <laughs> he is a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, what all things, what they become new. That's called newness, newness of life. That's called newness of life. So God does have a purpose. The Lord does have a plan for our lives. It's, the question is, do people want it? Do they desire it? And or what is the price that they're willing to pay to live it? Because we got to take up our cross and follow the Lord on a daily, ongoing, and consistent basis. Hmm? They got to follow Jesus. Let me take you over to the book of Jude. We'll probably close right here. Close right here. Because, you know, mo most folk ain't reading their Bible. They can say whatever they want to say. You ain't, they ain't reading their Bible. 
right here quoting, half quoting scriptures, or a few that they you know, might have memorized to try to justify their foolery. <laughs> Until the Lord start talking. I love this one little chapter. Jude. And the title of my outline is Beware of False Teachers. Beware. And the title of this message is Beware of Liars and Deceivers. That's all a false teacher and a false prophet is. A liar and you're a deceiver and you're living a life of hypocrisy. Play role acting. In other words, how they present themselves is not really who they are. Oh, no. <laughs> That's how they get you. And so Jude is addressing this, that we really can contend and fight for the faith. Not be suckered or sucked in by way of lies and deception. Some people can lie out of sudden fear. Don't mean that they are a habitual liar. A lot of things is where people begin to live a lifestyle of whatever it is. That's where the problem is. We understand John says because of the seed of God's word that is planted on the inside of us that we cannot sin or live a lifestyle of sin. That's God talking. That's truth talking. That's the reality. That's what I know. If you really say, if you look back at your life and say, yep, that's true, Reverend. That's true, preacher. That's true, brother. But you still have the will to live right. Now we teach you that God is not going to violate your will. Now he is going to make you, if it's just someday, sooner or later, yeah, you're going to just line up and do right. No, because everybody ain't going to heaven. We will to live for God. We will to give our life over to God. The Holy Spirit can woo you and woo you and draw you and deal with you. You still got to make a conscious decision to agree with God that you are a sinner. And you need to be saved. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ that he is the son of God. Die for the sins of the world. Ain't no gospel of inclusion. You either in Christ or you not. You either sheep or a goat. You either wheat or you are a tail. That's what the Bible says. Somebody said, well, you ain't coming to my church to preach. Yeah, because half of them hypocrites going to leave your church. And you'll get down to the people that really want to do real work. I know it looked good for television that you got all these folks sitting around doing nothing. And Jesus did say, let the wheat and the tail grow together. All right, in the book of Jude, there's only one chapter. And so we're going to close here, okay? In the book of Jude, the title of this message is what? Beware of liars and deceivers. Somebody say, that could be you. I mean, what? I need to beware of myself? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you and me or whoever don't fall into the same trap or error or downfall of the devil because pride go before destruction. And a halt the spirit, but what before, but what before fall? And it's a little leaven that leaven is what the whole lump. That's something you don't want to dibble and dabble in or play around with, because there's demon power connected to that stuff. Before you know, it done sucked you in, and you gonna be telling me you got the case that I can't help it. At that point, you do need deliverance. You know, people don't believe in delivery. They be like, oh, it's just going to go away. No, it's not. Because if it would have, it would already be gone. And when I get myself together, you would already got yourself together. If you know it's destructive to your life, 
There's no, there's no, no good for you. That is a toxic, toxic, toxic relationship that you have with that person. And they keep doing the same old dirt to you over and over again and lying about it. And you just go with it. And you become putty in their head. Listen, at a certain point, they know what to say. They know what to do. They know what to take you. know what to give you. Know how to wind and dine you and make everything sound like it's all smoothed over. But your heart's still broken. Your heart's still shattered into pieces. You still got doubts in your mind. You still tripping in your mind if they're really faithful or they're really loyal or not. Okay, let's go. Jude chapter 1, Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Christ Jesus. Beloved, while it, I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. How many of you have to work out your own salvation with fear with trembling? For certain men have crept in what unnoticed, unaware, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of God into lewdness and deny the only Lord, God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy here. But I want to remind you, look at what Jews say. <laughs> Though you once knew this, that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, Afterward, destroy those what who did not believe. When people are walking and living a life and a lifestyle of lies and deception, they really don't believe in God. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? They really don't trust the Lord. They really don't have a relationship with God. I know this is from the, you know some of that real hard saying people on somebody. They really not saved. Turn me off if you want to. They're really not saved. They're really not born again. And they say, well, no, no, you judging people. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Because even some of those that were even walking with the Lord at a certain point, they said, hell no, we can't handle this. And he said to the disciples, he said, will you also go away? They said, where are we going, Lord? Where are we going to go? You, you, you got the words of eternal life. They just follow you for the fish and the low, but we follow you for who you are and what you've done in our life. Yeah, yeah. How you have saved us, how you have delivered us, how you have filled us with something that is precious and wonderful and going to take us out of there for all eternity. Yeah. That's why we serve you, God. That's why we walk with you, Lord. Yeah. That's why we live for you, Jesus. That's why we know that we are saved by grace through faith. It's the gift of God. It is not of our own. That's why my soul does love you, Lord. <laughs> That's why. I contend. That's why we don't give in. That's why we don't quit. That's why we don't surrender. That's why we don't throw in the towel. That's why we don't compromise our position. Verse 6 says, And the angels who do not keep their, their proper domain or estate or place, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains in the darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and going after strange flesh, or that which is forbidden of God, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers, these liars and deceivers, defile the flesh. I wish I had time to break all this down. <laughs> defile the flesh. When you begin to understand this kind of thing that people are doing, you know, works of the flesh, you know, how they give themselves over to, you know, like sexual vice. Right? And so the man of the spirit uh, possesses a soul and, and he lives in the body. And out of the bones of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right? And, and so your mind is communicating and your body starts uh, following what's going on or what your mind is dictating to it. What's going through your eye gate and what's entering into your ear gate. And the deeds of whoever your daddy is is what you're going to obey. 
That's how you're going to live your life. That's why it behooves somebody to give their life over to Christ before it's eternally too late. And Sodom and Gomorrah, they went after strange flesh and are set forth as an example serving the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, they reject the thought. In other words, they don't want nobody to tell them nothing and see that nobody can tell them anything. And then they speak evil of dignitaries of people that are in authority. Loose lip, loose tongue. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said what? The Lord rebuke you. Right? Even though if you say something, there's a certain point and a place in taming your tongue that you shouldn't go beyond. You address the issue, say whatever the Lord have you to say, and keep it moving. And let God be the super judge of everything else. But these speak evil, verse 10, of whatever they do not know. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, a murderer and a killer, and have ran greedy after the error of Balaam for profit. And perish in the rebellion of Korah. And that's like witchcraft. And in the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Said the verse 12, these are spots in your love feast. While they feast with you without fear, serving only what? Themselves. They are clouds what? Without water. Cared about by the winds. Late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled and plucked up by the roots. Boy, that's deep and heavy. Ain't no life in them. Ain't no hope for them. And if you believe them, ain't no hope for you. That's a summary. So how are we going to remember all of that? Go watch the video again. It's a bad day is what I'm saying. It's like a doomsday is what I'm saying. It's like destruction is what I'm saying. It's like war, war, whatever is what I'm saying. <laughs> These people bring so much misery, so much destruction into people's lives. Promise you it's going to be rain. It's all dry and parched. Ain't no water coming. No hope coming, ain't no help coming, they just liars. Listen, there's certain things in life, I promise you, you just gonna have to go through. It's gonna be they got a they, they got a magic wand, a God's magic wand, where you just wave it all away. Oh no. You gotta endure your hardness. You gotta be a good soldier in Jesus Christ. You gotta arm yourself likewise as Christ has suffered in the flesh. You're gonna suffer too. They're raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now even the seven from Adam prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convince all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed. In an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, they're deprived and they're doomed. Liars and deceivers. It's like they have summoned, they have sentenced themselves to eternal separation from God. That's why lies and deception is so dangerous. At a certain point, listen, people don't recover themselves. They can get off into a cardinal sin, a blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. They don't cover themselves. There is a place of no return. Even the word of God says, shall we continue with sin that grace may abound? He said, no, God forbid. There is a line that if anybody cross, there is no return. I know it's hard. That's a hard pill to swallow, hard vitamin to chew, hard word to accept for a whole lot of people. But they don't read their Bible. You know, loving as God is. Hmm? Most of as God is. Peter denied him. Judas betrayed him. 
somebody is going out into eternal separation from God. And it is not his will that none what? Perish. Not God's will that none what? Perish. But all what? Come to repentance. And Jesus came to seek and to save they that were what? That were lost. So all the way back with Enoch, dealing with this, lies, deception, how the giant slept with the women, got outside of what God had originally intended and designed for their lives. So he's going to execute judgment on all. God is. Verse 16, these are grumblers, look at this, they that are associated with this spirit of these spirits of lies and deception that are birthed out of hell and Satan. These are grumblers, they're complainers, walking according to what? Their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words. You hear this other word. This is part of our third day of taming your tongue, flattering people to what? To gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there will be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause what? Divisions not having the Spirit, capital S. But you belong, verse 20, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, capital H, capital S, the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some what have compassion, making a distinction or a difference. But others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, Hating even the garment defiled or spotted by the flesh. And it says, now unto him who is able what? to keep you from stumbling or being deceived or being lied to. And to present you what? Faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now what and forever, and let the church say it, amen. amen. Hmm? The word of the Lord to the people of God. Yeah. Father, we thank you for everything that's been said and done in this house. We thank you that your word is going forth unhindered by any satanic force or power. Father, we pray that the axe is laid to the root of the tree. And we pray that everything that is not like you is cut, uh, is, is cut, is, is severed, God. Uh, you are the precision surgeon. Uh, that two-edged sword, Lord, that has gone forth today, Lord, that a life would be saved and changed and transformed by the power of God. That you send your word to heal, to deliver, to set free, to make whole, to align us and realign us with your purpose and your plan. That somebody will recover themselves out of the stare of the devil. I thank you, Lord, that our will will be your will. Our desires will be your desires. That you said, whom the Son hath freed is free indeed. We declare freedom, Lord. We declare deliverance in somebody's life right now that are caught up with lies and deception, God, through apostasy and false prophecy and false teaching or even self-deception, Lord, that they will be loose now. Every chain is broken, every shackle, every fetter now in the name of Yeshua. Say that we break your power over their lives. We break your influence over their lives in the name of Yeshua. Father, we pray for a move of God in their lives like never before. We pray for a restoration in their lives like never before. We pray for a reconciliation in their lives like never before, Lord. We pray for healing in their lives. Wholeness, 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 wholeness in their lives, Lord. Touch them at the point of their need. Father, we thank you for your supernatural manifestations of recovery in the name of Yeshua. Thank you for your engrafted word that's able to save our souls, our mind, our will, our intellect, Lord, our emotions. I give you praise today. 
Lord, we give you thanks today for soundness, for the truth of your word, Lord God. Oh, we bless you. We extol thee, O oh God, in the name of Yeshua. We say thank you in everything. We give you thanks, Lord. For we know that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Father, for providing for us. Thank you for laying your hands upon us. Thank you for times of refreshing and change that comes from your presence, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody agree with that said? Amen. Amen and amen again. Well, praise the Lord. God is good.